Hello, Nuggets. Morning. It's Friday. Uh, so uh, Liliana, our wonderful housekeeper who's been with us for eight years, uh, is here. So you might hear vacuum cleaners. You know, um, Laura and I talk about it all the time, but Liliana Day, our Friday, is the best day of the week. And it's so strange. I don't think... Um, I don't think she has any idea what an impact we've told her, <laughs> but I still don't think she understands the impact it has because she's not just coming in cleaning our house. She's firstly, she's been doing it for about eight years and she does it better now than she did eight years ago. Like the tenacity and the um, professionalism by w the, with which she approaches the housekeeping here is extraordinary. I couldn't do that with any job, no matter what it is. I progressively get worse from day one of any job. Uh, and Liliana's got better from day one. And she's just like, I don't know how she does it. She turns up every day and she focuses on it and she does a better job every time she comes. It's amazing. Uh, she's a wonderful soul. We love her very much. And it really makes a huge difference to our lives. It really does. It, it's, the, it's the best day of the week. <laughs> it just, you know, the house feels loved feels like she comes in and she kind of puts everything in place and then goes, you guys going to be okay for a while? And then she leaves. It's beautiful. Anyway, so you might hear some vacuum cleaners. So I just watched a, a video on Chris Smalls. Uh, I don't know if you know who this guy is, but he was, uh, you probably remember the press about him, but not his name. He was the Amazon employee who was fired, like, on the same day that he organized a protest against the treatment of Amazon workers. And he got fired that same day. Um, so now he's, I don't know, I guess it's now his life calling, which I think is kind of impressive. Um, but uh, it's, his, it's his calling now, or, it, or his um, focus in life, is to highlight the issues with Amazon, right? With the way they treat people. And... Um, it got me thinking about a couple of things because Amazon really, really worries me. You know, Walmart used to worry me, uh, but I don't think I understood how big the beast could get. <laughs> and because Walmart's easy. If you don't agree with Walmart, don't shop at Walmart. It's, it's, it's fairly simple, right? You can get good deals elsewhere. And also maybe you can't get things as cheap as Walmart and that's the way it's supposed to be. Maybe you're not supposed to get things that cheap because the price you pay is Walmart, right? That's that's how the world is run. Um, but Amazon, it's a little more difficult. And in COVID, it's a little more difficult because Amazon, although all companies, most companies offer some kind of shopping at home, it's a very difficult experience. You have to go find them, right? You have to go find these companies Rather than Amazon, we just go on Amazon and buy it, you know, or at least research it and you look at the reviews and like it's at the very least Amazon is a is the one of the first places that you do look to find the product, to find the company, to find out if it's any good. And then most of the time you'll just click buy. I know I do. Sometimes you'll say like, I'm going to look for that elsewhere, see if I can get it cheaper. But most of the time you don't. You just click buy from Amazon. You know, and it's one of the reasons they've become so bi big. And it's amazing to me. I felt the same way about Steve Jobs as well. But it's amazing to me how Jeff Bezos has got away with not being labeled as an evil person. Because he is. <laughs> he is. I know, I, I know, like, that's a heavy word, but he is. The way they treat their employees is appalling. He oppresses people. <laughs> and here's the thing. He's not oppressing people as he tries to, as he's on the journey to lifting everyone up, which is a little different, Different, right? If, if that was a small family-run company and they were struggling to stay afloat, you would say, like, well, that's the best they can do. You know, maybe it should fail if it's, like, if they can't do any better and their employees are working hard. But that's not what Jeff Bezos is doing. He's not just giving jobs to everyone and helping out the community and, and, and forming a culture of how we work here, of, of how they work at Amazon. He's using people to become the mega rich person that he, that he is. Those people have no opportunities. 
People who work at Amazon, they don't walk up the ladder. They don't work up the ladder. They are literally used up and thrown away. And it's so disappointing to me. And I think it's one of the reasons why as I get older, I feel like I want out of this system. Um, it's one of the downsides of capitalism, you know, and there, is, there are lots of positives to capitalism. We have a wonderful life um, in uh, America. But the downside to it is you are just using people up. That's what you're doing. You're using them up. You're, you're, you're basically saying that this group of people over here have less value and will be used to support this group of people over here. And the way that we'll do that is we'll tell this group of people over here that we're using that they can join over here. And sometimes a couple of them will make it through. And that will be enough to make everyone think they can make it through. But they can't make it through because then the system fails. So there are blocks in place to prevent them getting through. And I think what happens is America's now been sold on this idea that those one or two that make it across from one side to the other are an indication of the system succeeding. And to me, it's an indication of the failure of the system. And I think Je Jeff Bezos is an indication of the failure of the system. I have no idea if personally he feels that he's a good person. Maybe, you know, sometimes when you're deep in the belly of the beast, you don't even know you're in there anymore, right? You're so just, you become that person. Power corrupts, money corrupts, right? So he may just be a normal human who's acting the way everyone who would if they got to his level um, of, of um, richness, <laughs> for want of a better term. But then I look at other very, very rich people, and I'm sure they have issues too, but they don't seem evil to me. Bill Gates doesn't come across to me as evil. I'm sure he's done some really shitty things in his time, right? But he never comes across as evil to me. Quite the opposite. He comes across as a really good man, you know? And I think that there's a few of those people, you know? Um, Steve Jobs didn't come across as evil to me. He's just He was just an arsehole. <laughs> he just was. He was just a nasty bit of work, right? I don't really know enough about him to say whether or not he's evil, but I feel like I do know enough about Jeff Bezos to know that he's evil. They employ half a million workers, Amazon, and a good 90% of those workers are going to get completely fucked over by Amazon. That's the purpose of it, right? And they make enough money. They have enough profits. They, are, they could create a much, much better environment for the people who work there. And anyone who tells you they can't, that it's the nature of the beast, is wrong. Is absolutely wrong. The profit margin of Amazon is through the fucking roof. It's outrageous how much money they make, and it's outrageous how little tax they pay, right? Oh, God, it drives me nuts. This thinking about it gets me angry. I had a conversation with a, a, a friend of mine, libertarian, um, who's talking about how the free market will sort it out, and it just it drives me nuts, that point of view, because I love the idealism of it, and, and there are certain things where it works. But what happens in the free market is Amazon. We, we were talking at one point about, air, not this most recent time, but a long time ago, about airlines, about how they shouldn't be regulated. He's that much of a libertarian. Where the, you shouldn't regulate them because companies, the free market will sort it out. People will not fly on dangerous airlines. And my point was, yeah, but you don't know it's dangerous until they crash. If no one's regulating it, the crash has to happen. And his point was, well, yeah, but then a crash won't happen again. And my argument was, yes, it will. They'll just keep doing it. As long as people keep needing a cheap seat, they'll keep doing it. And I think the same is true of Amazon. I don't think it will ever change. It needs to be regulated. I don't see a way around it. The free market will not look after this problem. The free market will create a bigger company, possibly from a different country, from China or from wherever, from Taiwan or from Vietnam, an even bigger company will come through that treats its workers even shittier and offers even cheaper prices. And there is nothing within the free market that will solve the problems of the people who work at these businesses. Capitalism does not work for those people. And I think in this country, we refuse to accept that, which is why we need socialism. We need, we're not quite socialism, we need social democracy. And we got to find a way to make this word not so dirty to Americans. They're so offended by the word socialism 
And I don't know how it got to that. Being. Maybe I need a history lesson on American politics. Or, or, but how did they make it such an offensive word? Because the truth is, the amount that life costs the average American under capitalism is much greater than it would cost if we had a social democracy. You pay more for healthcare right now than if we had nationalized healthcare. Why that message doesn't get across to people, I don't understand. It, 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 I don't get it. Is it just stubbornness? Is this like the similar issue we see with the tribal warfare between Democrats and Republicans? Like you pick a side, it doesn't matter. You can be told outright the truth about that side and maybe there's just once you've picked your tribe, that's it. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what um, the truth is. You know, you need my wife. That's my wife screaming in the background. Hang on a sec. I'm going to close the windows. <laughs> I love my wife's laugh. Oh my God. It's a cackle. Um, where was I? Okay, so yeah, the capitalist society, the social democracy, we need it. We need to have some regulations. The problem is that government is corrupt, right? The problem is, is that if you pay a tax, I used to think, I used to be happy to pay tax. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I used to believe in it. I used to believe that we should support financially our society and i believe that when you earn more money you should pay more tax because invariably that is your role in a society right um the problem is that government is corrupt and government just overspends your taxes so there's a lot of things we need to fix right and you know we need to get the money out of politics i think would be a really good place to start anyway i, I drifted off i just I drifted off i wanted to talk about amazon and also the 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 idea that we have grown so comfortable with super rich people that we don't do anything about it and then i thought have we become comfortable with super rich people or are the super rich people spending a lot of money to tell us that we're comfortable with it like i wonder because i don't i speak to some people that if we talk about someone like Jeff Bezos, and I know he's at the top end, literally, he's he's the, the richest guy in the world. But I do to speak to some people like, yeah, I don't care. He can have as much money as he wants. You know, he's, he's earned it. It's our society. And, you know, diehard capitalists who are fine with that. But most people I speak to think it's a little, it, it's, it's, it's off center. There's something wrong with the system. That we should not have someone who earns more in a day than... Most people will learn in their lifetime. In fact, I read one statistic. I don't know if this is true, but I'm just going to splurt it out. Fuck it. Um, that said that Jeff Bezos earns in one year more than the bottom 50% earn in a year combined. Does that make sense? That can't be right, can it? I can't be right if it can't, if it is and we don't think there's a problem i'm just what is wrong with us anyway I don't know. let's say it's not right so i don't want to because it just sounds wrong to me the point is though why are we comfortable with super rich people or are we not comfortable because i don't know anyone that is but the super rich people have enough money and run enough businesses to make us feel that we're okay with it what if a majority of people actually aren't okay with it and the system is in place to defend that point of view right to vet, defend the point of view that there isn't a problem what if we can't beat it that way alone we can only beat it by referendums well then you get into referendums and you get into politics and you get into spending money and you get into how much money biden has versus how much trump has and which propositions have more money and can spend more money like the whole system is corrupt and we get back to you got to get the money out of politics Keep getting back there. Um, I'm sorry this is a bit of ramble. I just got upset when I saw this thing about Amazon. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, with my current situation of great, tremendous dissatisfaction with Los Angeles life, much as I do like Los Angeles, of just being surrounded by greed and the desire for money and the fact that I'm just kind of hating this obsession we have with money. It just feels so empty it feels so empty to me um and not satisfying you know it's kind of like the hollywood story it's like 
you know, where there's a million actors in LA and, you know, 1% of them will become famous and make money. And 99% of them will assume that they're going to be one of part of the 1%. But they can't be. They can only ever be part of the 99%. That's how I feel about money and this obsession with money. And LA is expensive, man. Living here in California is very expensive. And LA in particular is very expensive. And there are more expensive places in the world. But they're a lot more cheaper. Oh, okay. So we were watching a show. We're watching a show called Alone, which is fantastic, right? It's really interesting. It's about these people who go live in the wilderness and for a half a million dollar prize, which is kind of a grotesque TV show when you think about it, pushing these people to the limits of their existence and potentially you know, damaging the rest of their lives, the health for the rest of their lives so that they can win money. But these people are looking at the half a million dollars they're going to win and they're saying it's going to change their lives forever. Like, that's it. That's all they need. Family will be secure forever. And I'm thinking, well, not in L.A. <laughs> that 500 grand will last you about, I don't know, five years, ten years maybe, if you're really good with it. Maybe if you're really good with it. But if not, it's a $100,000 a year lifestyle here, you know. How do you earn $100,000 in L.A.? So, I don't know, this obsession with money that we have. We need some social democracy in this country. We really do. It's not about preventing people from getting rich. That's the other thing, is I think people think that social demo democracy dictates that you will not be able to get rich. That's not how it works. There are rich people in Europe. <laughs> do we think there aren't any rich people in England or in Germany or in Denmark? I mean, there are rich people all over the place. There just aren't that many Jeff Bezoses, and that's how it should be. And there are one or two that are very... It's interesting to me that if you look at the list of super, super rich people, at the top, it's Americans. And then everything, most of them, not everything, most of them under that are people from highly corrupt countries. I think that kind of answers the question to me. Okay, and then the last thought I had is that I've had this website on my mind and not had the motivation to do it but I feel like we need it, and I think it would be successful. Um, it's called P-E-T-H. It's like Peter, but with an H, Peth. As People for the Ethical Treatment of Humans. And it would basically be a database of the quality of what it's like to work for companies. Now, there are similar things out there, but a lot of them are already corrupt, or they focus on one aspect and not another. Like the Better Business Bureau, I've heard is corrupt. You know, there's Yelp right for just for shopping but yelp is corrupt we know that if you don't buy their advertising or you don't pay them they won't push promote your good reviews i mean all of these systems are corrupt i feel like we need a social website um kind of like wikipedia right that just runs on donations um and accepts no donations from companies whatsoever and no donations other than individual donations um that basically runs down, every, has a database of every company and the quality of life they offer their employees. And this can be from reports from within. So you can literally look up the company you work for and write a report. It would need to be moderated. You would need to figure out how, if people have vendettas, if they're working against the company and stuff like that. Um, but in concept, I would like this idea because I would use it. Like if I went on there, and I think people would maybe, you know, perfect world would take note of that. If they go on to peth.org, for the sake of argument, it's a terrible name, but people for the ethical, ethical treatment of humans, <coughs> .org, if they go on that website and they type in Amazon, should I shop at Amazon, they just type in Amazon because they're going there for should I shop, and it comes up with a big, huge red X and a list of all of the problems with the company, maybe enough of us, enough people voting for their wallets in this perfect capitalist society, they would change. Because right now, no one gives a fuck about these people. No one gives a fuck about Chris Smalls. Reporters do, and liberals do, and some people bleeding hearts like me who watch the program do. But we still buy from Amazon. We need to address it. I don't know. God, this is such a rambling thing. But that's why I do this video, because it's mine. That's why I do this blog. I don't know. Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Social democracy? Is it too late for America? Is it too late for us to just start saying, no, let's start looking after ourselves. Let's start putting limits in place. Let's start closing the 
inequality gap? For fuck's sake. <laughs> Let's stop enslaving people in our prison systems. God, I hope this country gets better. It's not going to get better with Biden, by the way. It's going to get worse with Trump, but it's not going to get better with Biden. It's not going to get better until we completely radically change the system. You know, because even if Bernie Sanders had got in, it wouldn't change. Because Bernie Sanders may have wanted to change it, but the system won't allow him to change it. Just as, fortunately, the system didn't allow Trump to completely destroy everything in the four years he had. Because he would have, you know. And if this were a different country, if Trump had got in in England, he could have basically destroyed that country, you know. So in some ways, in some measures, our system works well, the checks and balances. But it also means that you can't really get anything done. I don't know. The future is, maybe it's just getting older. The future's not that bright, or is it? Anyway, leave a comment and tell me why the future's bright and I'm a miserable cunt. Bye. <laughs>